part three. Marco is an adult now and ready to raise his family. Is it easy to raise chicks on the beach? What other birds nest nearby? By the time winter ended in late March, Marco and about 50 of his fellow terns had arrived at Florida's Stump Pass Beach State Park after their long flight from Brazil. Now they need to find the right place for the colony to make their nests. And this spot seems right. A variety of small fish congregate where the intercoastal waterway meets the Gulf. A reddish egret, Wilson's plovers, snowy and gray egrets, little blue herons, willets, gulls, and other terns seem to like the habitat too, especially the tidal pools. And here's an example of a tidal pool in this photo. Humans have roped off a large area to keep other humans from disturbing the bird nests. They have also erected small white slatted shelters to provide shade. Because of the plentiful prey and the open beach, the colony of least terns will stay and their colony should thrive and grow. Marco is in search of food. And after three dives that miss their mark, he snares a small fish on the next one. Now a handsome two-year-old least tern in full breeding plumage, Marco is ready to find a female to share his nest. He takes this fish ashore and alights next to a possible mate, beginning a charming courtship ritual. He bobs his head from side to side, shaking the small fish in his bill as he puffs his chest and dances around her. Some females are already mated, but not this one. She soon crouches down and accepts the fish from him. That small fish is a mating gift and a promise to share parental duties with her in raising their family. The two turns mate quickly to seal the bond. After bonding, Marco's mate lays two eggs on the beach in a shallow scrape of sand, twigs, and shells. Turns are masters of camouflage. Least turn eggs blend in with the sand as do their chicks. Both parents incubate the eggs. In the hot afternoon sun, Marco opens his beak and flutters to cool himself off, standing over the eggs and uses his wings to shade them. And in the photo, you can see Marco shading a tiny little chick and one egg. Over the next three weeks, the chicks develop and grow in the eggs until finally the camouflage chicks hatch, one at a time. For the first few days, the chicks stay near the nest, cuddled together under their mom's body in that tiny depression in the sand. Each day, Marco and his mate bring them fish for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Early one morning, a flurry of shrill cries echo across the beachfront, waking the mother. She leaves the nest and flies off, calling as she joins a mob of terns attacking a big intruder in their territory. It is a yellow crowned night heron searching for ghost crab holes in the sand. The heron prefers ghost crabs, but a tiny chick will do nicely too. These loud pesky terns act quickly and bomb him with poop to chase him away out of their territory. Farther down the beach, he alights and catches a crab as it leaves its home. Three days after his chicks hatch, Marco and his mate lead their family to an area above the dune that is safer than their nest on the open beach. Marco's mate kicks her feet back and rotates her body, scraping out a shallow cup in the sand where her chicks can hide. She chooses a place close to some railroad vine whose lush green foliage provides a little cover and shade for the chicks. The sun is hot in Florida. Seasonal change brings storms to the Florida coast. When clouds darken the sky, Marco sees frigate birds soaring overhead, flying inland to find shelter. Before long, a tropical storm hits and hits hard with strong winds and pelting rain. Fortunately for Marco, his family has already moved to higher sheltered ground. 
From his shelter, he watches a human in a small boat accidentally strike a loggerhead sea turtle near the beach at Stump Pass, where she has been getting ready to lay her eggs. The boat's motor dies and a huge wave lifts the boat, then crashes onto the shore at the very spot in the roped off area where Marco's nest of chicks had been. Struggling ashore, the human shakes himself and limps off to get help. Rough surf and high tides flood Marco's original nesting area and destroy some of the stakes that the humans had put in the ground to protect the colony. All the eggs in the turn nests close to the gulf are washed away. Many sea turtle nests have also been washed over with seawater, killing their tiny contents. The stricken loggerhead sea turtle has washed up on shore. After a time, the boatman returns. With him are two humans from the turtle patrol who mark the loggerhead with a yellow stake and report her death. After the storm, ghost crabs race along the sand, rebuilding their tunnels and their homes that were destroyed by the surf. The crabs are hungry and some are able to grab an egg or chick and drag it into a hole in the sand for supper. When one crab moves too close to Marco's nest, he and his mate, flapping their wings and looking fierce, chase the crab. Other terns from the colony join in to pester and threaten it until it goes away. The storm has brought debris in its wake. Plastic bottles, cups, and straws litter the sand in the turn territory. They will pose a danger to sea turtles and other creatures that visit the shore. Two Wilson's plovers wander along the water's edge with their chick. Marco and his fellow terns don't mind as long as the plover doesn't nest or wander too close to their nests. Plovers won't hurt the terns. The plover family nests inside an area with more plants and more insects than the terns colony's territory on the open beach. Least terns prefer an open sandy spot for their nests that allows them to see predators coming, gather the group and prepare for a mob scene to chase them away. Plovers nest by themselves, unlike the terns who band together in colonies to raise their young. Because the terns chase away predators, plovers benefit by raising their young near the tern colony. Least terns eat mostly small fish, crustaceans, insects, small mollusks, and marine worms. Plovers eat all of those, as well as other tiny critters they find in the rack line, on plants, or in the sand. The Wilson's plover chicks have to forage for their own food, but their parents lead them to good feeding areas and guard them while they hunt. Marco brings food to his chicks because young terns can't fly or dive. If Marco and his mate didn't feed their chicks, they wouldn't survive. One night, a huge creature drags itself up from the water's edge and right through the colony. It's a 350 pound sea turtle. Although it is dark, the terns still try to chase the sea turtle away, but she is determined to lay her eggs and continues her crawl. Marco quickly moves his family farther from the creature, scraping out a new nest for them to sleep in. Somehow the loggerhead barely misses, crushing several turn nests with eggs inside them. As a parent, Marco chases away anyone who wanders too close to one of his chicks, even other turns carrying fish. After a few weeks, their chicks develop flight feathers and fledge, flying short spurts along the sand. On a hot and windy summer's day, Marco and his mate delight in splashing in the surf with their offspring and in watching the newly fledged chicks test their wings in strong winds. Even after they fledge, Lee's turn chicks still want to be fed and chase dad when he has fish. Soon the family will head south and their chicks will need to fly in all sorts of weather. Their winter home in South America is over 2,000 miles away. 
humans aren't sure how these dainty birds fly that far or the actual path their migration takes. Marco has been a good turn father to his chicks and their survival is his reward. After all, one good turn deserves another. The end.